What's going on everyone? In today's episode, we're starting even more seeds. That's right, we're planting seeds. It's April and that means that it's time to start planting some of your transitional fast growing crops. We're gonna talk about what that means and what those crops are so you can start some seeds. Let's go. So when it comes to seed starting, you have three main seed starting seasons. A lot of people would consider there to only be two. However, I'll hopefully persuade you to believe that there's three after this video. So you have your main season stuff, your summertime crops that need a long time to get up and growing, and they require a lot of season, and you may not have that full season. So what do gardeners do? They start them as early as possible, sometimes late February, more commonly in like early March, like we do. And that allows the plant to get up and growing so that when the warm weather arrives, you can throw a plant that's already seven, eight inches tall out into the garden, and it's gonna be off to the races. Then you have your early spring stuff, but that stuff usually matures fairly fast. It doesn't like warm weather, so what do you do? You typically are gonna start that a few weeks after you start your slow growing summer stuff. That's the second season of seed starting because if you were to start this stuff when you started your tomatoes, they would be so large and so stressed by the time you move it out to the garden, you'd actually be harming them rather than helping them. And so a lot of times you'd start those faster growing cold weather stuff just to get a head start, just to get them established. And then you're gonna move them out to the garden in the next couple of weeks. So you'd start those after you start your tomatoes and peppers and whatnot. And then you have your third season and that is your fast growing summer crops. These are crops that you wanna get a head start on, but if you start them too early, they're gonna be way too advanced, way too developed, and they're gonna be stressed. But if you start them too late, you're losing your season and you're ultimately wasting a lot of time when you could be getting them started. So there's really important time frames for when you wanna start stuff and why you wanna start them so you have the most success. All right, so for our soil, we're using our usual. This is a combination of expanded Coca Coir and Pro Mix. I love this combo and I've really fallen in love with this combo just because it provides superior drainage yet really adequate water holding capabilities. And because it's so fine, it allows the roots just to develop real fast. And then we added in our Trifecta Plus for our fertilizer. So when the plants start to grow, they can uptake that nutrients when they are ready for it. And they're awesome. The cell size we're using is our four cell packs. The reason why we're going with four cells is because it's gonna provide enough soil to allow those plants to grow for about four to seven weeks, depending on the crop, without having too much soil to where you run into problems and waste space. You don't really wanna throw a fast growing summer crop into a three inch pot. Really refrain from doing that. These are really only good, and I've told this to you before if you watch this channel, these are really only good if the plant needs to be transplanted. Like if you had a tomato plant growing in like a small little two inch pot or like a cell like this, you could move it from here into this three inch pot, no problem, but I wouldn't recommend starting seeds in the three inch pot. It just holds on to too much water and you're gonna have some problem. But now that we got that and the soil is pre-moistened, it's time to start some seeds. All right, so the first group of crops we're gonna be starting is our cucumbers. Now, the reason why we wanna start our cucumbers right now is because you can directly sow seed into the ground. The problem is, is if you directly sow seed into the ground, often what happens is you have to do that when the soil is warm, and that's usually around like early June, late May. That's also the time when cucumber beetles start to come out of dormancy and they start to feed on the young cucumber seedlings. And so if you suffer from getting cucumber beetles, what you can do is start your seeds early, get the plants up and growing, because the cucurbitaceae, that is an enzyme that's found in young uh, cucumber seedlings, when they first germinate, they have the highest concentration of that. And so that's kind of a pheromone that's given off, a scent that's given off, that attracts the cucumber beetle. If you get that out of the way, in like a greenhouse or in your grow room, it's already done, it's already past that phase, and you're far more likely to have success with your cucumber plants um, and kind of prevent them from getting the cucumber beetle. So that's the first reason. Second reason is because cucumbers, they tend to shut down production when things get really hot. And things in Michigan get really hot really fast. And so I like to start my cucumbers as early as possible. And we probably will still direct sow some seeds into the ground. But I don't know, because I don't have a crystal ball, what our future holds, right? I don't know how warm it's gonna get and how fast it's gonna happen. And so because of that, I like to start some early and some later, just because that way I'm covered if I need to be. And so um, that's why I'm starting my cucumbers right now. You wanna be careful on not starting them too soon though, otherwise you're gonna be left with a vining mess. Don't typically start your cucumbers if they're gonna be indoors or in a confined area like this 
any longer than about five weeks. If you're planting in the garden in six or seven weeks, just wait a few weeks. Next grouping of crops we're gonna be starting right now is our herbs. Now, some of your herbs you'll have already started. Things like your basil, you might have already started. If you haven't, now's a great time to start it. We started some about two weeks ago, and we're also starting some right now. Just because I didn't have time to start everything all at once, and because basil's pretty forgiving and it's a crop you can grow all season long, we're starting some more basil. Uh, another one that we're starting is dill. Dill is a great crop to grow right now because of the fact it goes to seed pretty fast. If it gets really hot, like in July, it'll go to seed. And because I like to harvest as many of the ferns as possible and not the seed heads, I wanna grow it early. But if you grow it too early, it's gonna be like this tall. They grow really fast. So I don't wanna start my dill too soon, but I also don't wanna start it too late. Again, it's kind of that fringe season, right? So we're starting some dill right now. Now those are the only two herbs that we're starting, but really any seed, and this goes for not only herbs, but some of the other crops as well. If you have some seeds that you think fit into this category, and you are asking yourself if you can start them right now, the time frame that you wanna look for is three to four weeks. You wanna wait about three to four weeks before your last frost to start any crop at all. That's kind of this, this grouping of crops that we're looking at. So whether that is basil, that's about four to six weeks, but it's still in that kind of the fringe, right? Um, and then you have your, your dill, that's three to four weeks. You might have other crops as well that fit into that category. It might be parsley, right? It might be, uh, it might be fennel, right? I can't tell what that, there's so many crops, so many. But what I can say is that a lot of these crops fall into that kind of three to five week category before our last frost date. So use that information how you will, but we're gonna get some dill started, some basil started, and those are some of the herbs that we're starting right now. The next group of crops we're gonna be starting is our flowers. Now flowers are absolutely beautiful, I love them. And I, in fact, I think I've loved them more in recent years than I did when I first started gardening. Yeah, I was very strict with vegetables and herbs when I first started gardening, but as I've started to kind of discover the different shapes, colors, textures, and stuff that's out there, as well as the benefits that flowers can provide the garden, I've definitely added a lot more of them to the garden. So we're gonna start some of those. I've got some copper red straw flowers. I've also got, um, I've also got some white straw flowers. This is vintage white, so beautiful. Absolutely love those. And so we're gonna be adding those to our garden. Now those should have been started about uh, at the six to eight week mark before our last frost date. We're about three to four weeks out until our last frost date. So obviously we're a little bit late, but better late than never. It's kind of like the basil situation. If you haven't started them, get them started now, but definitely don't wait until your last frost to decide you want them in your garden. Next ones here are carnations. I absolutely love carnations. Again, these should have been started about three to four weeks ago, but because I didn't think about it, I didn't start them. And that's fine. Mistakes happen, right? We're human. So we're going to start our carnations right now, but definitely get those started as soon as possible. And then we got zinnias. This is actually appropriate to start these right now. Mrs. My Gardener has a really keen, uh, keen eye for zinnias. She absolutely loves zinnias. So we're going to start some more for her and uh, she likes to use them for, for cut flowers. So uh, those are all of the flowers that we're going to be starting. But again, as I said, if it falls into the three to four week category before your last frost date, get them started. This is by no means a comprehensive list of all the flowers you could be starting. These are just the ones that we're starting. Up next is melons and summer squash. Now, these are crops that you don't wanna start too soon. If you start them too soon, you're gonna end up, just like with cucumbers, with a massive vining mess. So make sure you're kinda of within that three to five week time frame until your last frost date, and you should be good to go. We're gonna be starting our favorite, that's Black Beauty, and we're also trying a new one this year. Fell in love with it when I tried it at a farmer's market last year in Detroit. It's the Blanco de Tresti. It's an Italian variety of zucchini. Absolutely amazing. So the next group of crops here are our summer squash as well as melons. Now, melons and summer squash is ideal to start right now because, again, the sooner we can get them started, the faster they're going to be up and growing. But we don't want to start them too soon. Otherwise, we're going to be left with a vining mess. Now, when it comes to summer squash, I absolutely love zucchini. We're also gonna be starting some summer squash as well, but I've got here some Black Beauty zucchini and this Bianco de Tresti. Absolutely fell in love with it last summer. We had it at a farmer's market down in Detroit, and it was absolutely amazing. And we also have some melons. We have an Orange Glow watermelon. Now, if you're growing or trying to grow large watermelon, you really wanna start them as soon as you possibly can without starting them too soon because large watermelons are gonna have a really hard time here in Michigan. It's not really the climate. They prefer down south. They prefer hot, they prefer humid. 
if we happen to get lucky, that's great. I always will throw a few into our garden just in case we do get lucky. Next is sugar baby watermelon. This is on the other end of the spectrum. This is more of a personal sized watermelon and these we have no problem at all growing. So if you struggle growing large watermelon and you live in a colder climate, shorter growing season, give a smaller personal watermelon a try. Then we have some of my all time favorites here. This is Hale's Best Jumbo Cantaloupe. Love it, it's a great one. We actually grow it on our cattle panel trellises. That's what's great about having those is that you can support a melon like that, three to five pounds, no problem at all, and they do really well. And then we also have Kazak. This is a great melon. If you're looking for something that's interesting, try growing this. It actually tastes kind of like, like almost like a, a D'Anjou pear, like it's got that creamy pear taste but it also has that really buttery, soft texture of a cantaloupe. And then finally we have Honey Rock. Honey Rock's kind of my go-to favorite. So those are all the ones that we're growing. By no means a complete list, just the ones that we're starting. But again, we wanna make sure that we're starting them early enough that they're getting established, but not too, uh, not too early to where it's a nasty mess. And then finally, you'll notice we're starting them in their own tray. We've designated this tray for our cantaloupe and all of our melons and summer squash because when they grow, even when they're small, they get really big. And if we were to plant them next to our basil, we'd have massive problems. They would overshadow, they'd overcrowd, and ultimately our smaller crops would just get trampled. And so we're gonna throw them in their own tray. And this is where I really always talk to you guys about, I cannot stress this enough, that you wanna match the size of the crop to, you know, to the rest of the stuff in that tray. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems. And last but not least, what we're starting today is our beans. Now, I love to start an early harvest of beans because if you start them early, they're gonna have no problem at all growing. What they really prefer is warm soil. That's why a lot of gardeners struggle starting beans directly into the ground in early season. It's not that they can't grow, it's that they have a hard time germinating. They really suffer from things like rot and damping off very, very easily. And so if you start them indoors, you're already past that point and then you're off to the races. When the really hot weather comes, anything over 80 degrees, your beans really shut down production. Now, the final thing I know you guys are gonna ask when it comes to beans is bush beans versus pole beans. I prefer to start my pole beans directly in the ground when the weather gets warm. I'm gonna start them near a trellis. As beans start to grow, they form tendrils very fast. And what you don't want is you don't want a tangled up nasty mess. If you happen to need to leave these in your tray, if the weather gets kind of cold and kind of nasty, you can leave these in a the tray for an extra week, they probably won't hate you too much. But if you leave a pole bean in this tray for four to six weeks, at the six week mark, they're gonna start to wrap and tangle and they're gonna start to trellis. That's what they're born to do. So I prefer to start my bush beans early. I hadn't really mentioned that before, so I thought I'd at least let you guys know that. Bush beans early, pole beans later, right in the ground. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you did learn something, let me know in the comments box down below. I always love to know that these videos are helping you out. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care.